Remember how last year I showed you guys my Pokemon, Senran Kagura, Disgaea, and Neptunia collection? Well, in the comments of those videos, you requested to see my console collection as well. In this video, we're going to be looking at my consoles, but more specifically, my handheld console collection. There are quite a few systems to look at. Some are old, others are state of the art. For a lot of them, I have the original boxes, and there's a few that aren't functional, so there's quite a range there. But what most have in common are that there's some sort of story attached to them. I already mentioned in some other videos that I really like consoles, despite mainly playing games on PC. They symbolize eras of gaming, and I like having hardware that represents those eras as well as experiences and memories attached to them. I'm going to go through my collection in order of acquisition for the most part. Some I grouped together just for coherency. Let's start right in the beginning with the Nintendo Game & Watch, specifically Game & Watch Fire the widescreen version. Technically, you could say it has better graphics than the regular non-widescreen version. I don't know when I was given this, but I was very young. I talked about the Game & Watch a little bit in a video called The Nintendo Way. The gist of things is that the Game & Watch is a result of using components that were made affordable by the Calculator Wars, the segmented LCD screen being one of those components. The games were simple, and each game was its own device. Fire is quite easy to understand. There's a left and right button. Make sure the people who jump get into the ambulance and don't drop anybody along the way. You can choose between game A and game B. Game B is faster and more hardcore, just like group B rallying was more hardcore than group A. It's a ton of fun, and out of the many Game & Watch games, Fire has aged relatively well since there's no strange controls or weird, overly ambitious gameplay. The condition of my particular Game & Watch isn't that great. It did a lot of international travel in its first few years of existence, so I guess you could say this console sports some intercontinental damage. It's functionally fine, but the faceplate is dented, and the buttons were munched by mice. It's not a pristine example, but I like it, and I still play it from time to time. Now, this I'm sure is something more of you will have experience with. It's a Game Boy Pocket. I still have the original clear case for it. My parents bought it for me in the summer of 98, for an upcoming trip to the Philippines. They really didn't know what games to get me, so the selection I got is uh, quite poor. An unlicensed game with four not very good games, which I already made a video about in the past, Jungle Book, and FIFA 96. I do like soccer, but I wasn't really a fan of the game, and Jungle Book for me was a platformer which I thought was a bit boring. I'm pretty sure the games were bargain bin specials. While the games weren't thrilling, it did give me some form of entertainment during the long flight. None of the planes had any screens, so playing these games was actually amazing compared to doing nothing. The trip was great, not only did we land at the then new Hong Kong airport, but the Philippines was very interesting. We didn't go to any of the tourist spots, but rather lived among the locals. It was quite an eye-opening experience. Remember, I was still just a kid, and to be suddenly thrown into a country with a different climate, Different people and different way of life is really something. I definitely haven't seen such levels of poverty before either. In stark contrast, there was also gigantic malls and highly urbanized places. Strangely enough, the Philippines was also the first place I'd ever seen a 7-Eleven and Wendy's. We don't have those places in Germany. Only after moving to Canada did I see them again. Anyway, back to the Game Boy. In one of the larger malls in Manila, my mom bought me this. Double Dribble 5 on 5. I didn't really like basketball but I really liked this game. The music was quite good in the menus, and overall, I wasn't even that bad at it. The gameplay was also much faster and exciting than FIFA 96, which in comparison almost seemed to move in slow motion. But here's the best part. It's a bootleg. The plastic on the cartridge is so cheap and terrible, and the manual is atrocious. Try reading that nonsense. The game doesn't always work either. If you open it up, you're greeted by a blob of epoxy, I'm actually quite into the novelty of having this bootleg in my possession. It's definitely an interesting thing. Let's jump ahead by about a decade, since I didn't get another handheld since then. Next up is a bunch of Nintendo DS's. Three DS Lights and a DSi. I didn't get them all at once, but I'll talk about them all at once. The first one I got was this blue DS Lite. I bought it at a pawn shop that's located near me. The main reason I got it was to play Zelda and Pokemon games. This one includes the original box, which I think is almost complete. I think there's like an internal divider in there somewhere that's missing. It was in very good condition. It didn't look brand new, but it looked uh, well taken care of. 
There were a few different colors to choose from at the shop, but I like the blue one since it came with a box, and it's also the same one Konata in Lucky Star has. I spent a lot of time playing the 4th gen and later 5th gen Pokemon games on the system. I had played Pokemon Silver on an emulator in the early 2000s, but hadn't played since then, and I got back into it in a big way once I got the DS. So the DS, like for many people, became my Pokemon machine. I'm not sure why, but I started becoming very interested in the DS, even though I didn't use it for that many other games. I bought a new unboxed DS Lite at a Best Buy, at a time when the DS Lite was discontinued for quite a while, so it was a bit of a find in that regard. I thought it was a weird blue color I've never seen before, but it turned out that somehow the box faded into that color. It's actually silver. The only thing I regret is trying to put a screen protector on it. It doesn't really fit, but I don't want to mess with it anymore. For spare parts, I also got this horrific thing from a value village. Apparently white DS lights actually have a, a clear outer layer before the white layer. Hand cheese from the previous owner seeped in between, and it's impossible to remove. Truly disgusting. But I've got spare parts. Except the hinge, because the previous owner broke it. I'm gonna guess a kid just threw it in his backpack and, you know, played it at school with his dirty little grubby hands or whatever. That's not all though, I also bought a DSi brand new just as they were clearing them out during the early 3DS era. I really like how it looks, and the slightly larger screens are a cool bonus. In terms of minimalist design, the DSi is up there with my favorites. It's just so sleek looking, and the light already looked pretty sleek to begin with. Now we have the Game Boy Advance. I have two of them, and both are SP models. I bought the turquoise one first. It's not in great shape visually, but it works perfectly fine. It's also a backlit model. The reason I got one was because I wanted to play all Game Boy games on one device. Later on, I got a black one complete with the box. That one is a frontlit model. Something I found out is that the colors on the frontlit model often look much better, which is why when I show footage of a GBA being played, it's usually the frontlit model. As long as you have a good amount of light, it looks awesome. Thanks to the viewer who brought this fact to my attention, by the way. Next, it's the Game Boy Color. I got the system at a decent price. Basically, what I wanted was the two Zelda Oracle games. While browsing eBay, I found a listing that had both games, a strategy guide, and the Game Boy Color for a very reasonable price. At that point in time, the US and Canadian dollar was basically par, so I ended up with all of this without spending too much money. Just for perspective though, back then a Game Boy Color wasn't worth that much anyway, so it didn't add too much to the overall price. Price wasn't the only reason I picked up this model. I had a friend who owned a Game Boy Color just like this one, same color. He was my first friend at school after moving to Canada, and introduced me to all kinds of cool Nintendo stuff like the GameCube and the Game Boy Camera, which at the time I had no experience with. He also got me hooked on Metal, which ended up being a lifelong interest for me. After elementary school, we gradually stopped hanging out, until we basically didn't keep in touch anymore. I remember the last time I saw and spoke to him, he saw me work on my car on the driveway, we ended up having a good chat, we reminisced about playing video games as kids, and it even turned out that we were taking similar courses in college, though we went to different colleges. The conversation ended with a let's hang out again soon. Unfortunately, that's the last time I saw him. Turned out he was diagnosed with cancer a short while after our conversation, and he died about a month later. I only heard about it months after. I have no pictures, I don't know where he's buried, and I only found his obituary literally two months ago. But even as time passes and the faces in my memories fade away and become unrecognizable, I can still look at this Game Boy Color and suddenly the past doesn't seem so far away. Somewhere along the line, I got myself a PSP 3000. I can't quite remember the timeline. I think it must have been shortly after I got my first DS because I got it at the same pawn shop as the blue DS. The reason for wanting a PSP was to play Valkyria Chronicles 2. I just finished the first game on the PS3 and I really wanted to play what was then the newest game as well. After finding out how easy it was to soft mod, I got a PSP 2000 because I was worried about breaking mine, and proceeded to mod it. It was so easy, I just modded the 3000 as well. The PSP has been great. I used to commute by train, and playing Valkyria Chronicles 2 really helped pass the time quickly. I also played Corpse Party on it, and I've got most of the endings if I remember correctly. I also have an original PSP that doesn't work. I got it from a friend, it doesn't turn on, and judging by the dust behind the screen, I think it's been opened. I haven't really done anything with it. 
but it did remind me how nice the original PSPs felt. They're just so solid compared to the 2000 and 3000 models. I guess the only thing missing now is a PSP Go. We're basically up to the present because next up we have the Nintendo 3DS. I've got a regular model as well as the XL version. I got the regular version in anticipation for Gen 6. I've got the box for this one too. I bought the console during a Black Friday sale. It was pretty cheap at the time for a current system. And it even included Mario 3D Land. Not physically though, it came pre-installed. The best memory I have with this system was on the launch day of Pokemon X and Y. One of my friends and I pre-ordered X and Y respectively from Amazon. We met up after work to hang out. We went to our mailboxes, got the games, started the game up at the same time. It was awesome. It almost felt as exciting as Pokemania in the 90s. We went through each patch of grass, figuring out the differences of both versions and trading with each other whenever we caught a Pokemon that was exclusive to each other's games. At the same time, I like how you could see people who were online on the bottom screen. Makes you feel like you're playing along with a whole bunch of other people. Wonder Trade was also really fun. In the first day, there weren't that many awesome trades, mostly just low-level stuff, but the randomness was exciting. Later on, I got the XL Zelda edition so I can enjoy the extra screen size. Also, I'm a Zelda fan and I kind of wanted the Zelda edition. I also like the buttons more. Overall, I spent hundreds of hours across both 3DSs. The most recent handheld console I bought is the PlayStation Vita. Yes, I do have a Switch, but that's still really new, so let's wait until it becomes older and more interesting before we talk about that again. I mentioned in the recent video that I bought it just before the slim versions came out. A lot of Japanese niche games ended up on there, but the fact that PC ports became so prominent meant that I really never used the Vita all that much. I really like it though. It's a good piece of hardware, it's quite powerful, it looks good, and it feels all right in the hand. Personally, I think the buttons are too stiff and too small. I like the PSP much more in that regard, but it's a great overall package. The Best Buy I got it from only had one left and the box is unfortunately a bit buggered. Normally the condition of the box is really important to me, but at the time I guess I just really wanted it then and there. I talked about the Vita plenty of times on the channel, even recently as well, so I don't think I need to go on about it right now. Anyway, those are all my handheld systems so far. You might have noticed that there were some consoles you've seen in past videos that haven't appeared here. Those were borrowed from friends, so that's why. Instead of doing a mini review of each system, I tried telling some stories and memories instead, so I hope you liked that approach. Thank you to the Patreon subscribers. You can also be a supporter by becoming a patron. Check out the site. And the description has links to a number of different places you can find me at as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.